Can you explain the unicorn? <laughs> What's that? The unicorn. Oh man, that's going to be the whole thing. No, we're going to have to bow. Okay, all right. I'm gonna throw you. I'm gonna throw you. Uh, I'm gonna throw you uh, basically a, a curve ball on unicorns. So I guess I guess his question was the most interesting one of tonight. All right. Ralph was so smart. When are you gonna teach a teaching on unicorns, Pastor? When are you gonna do it? Ralph was smart. I'm gonna do it now. I'm gonna ask him the question. Okay. All right. So I'm just gonna throw a curve ball, and then we have to wrap this up for tonight. All right. So unicorns, um, this is just a curve ball, and uh, I'm just gonna throw in my, what's going on in my mind. So it's not a sure thing yet. All right, so first of all, we do know this. Most of the time when you look up unicorn in the Bible concerning about a one-horned figure, you'll see a lot of evil connections, actually. So you'll see a lot of evil connection concerning about a one-horned creature. Now this is not really a unicorn, obviously. It's some kind of weird looking creature, okay? <laughs> Just say that, all right? Now the reason why I draw it like this is because of this. Because in the Bible, in the book of Daniel, it's a one horn he goat, Alexander the Great. And if you keep reading that chapter, it switches from the prince of Grecia, Alexander the Great, to the Antichrist himself. See? So that's interesting, that's one. So it's likened to Satan or the Antichrist at the book of Daniel. Not only that, Daniel chapter uh, 7 or 8, it mentions a little horn out of all the other horns. See? As if it's like one horn, one special horn, like a unicorn. And the Bible says that is the Antichrist. Another thing is that what's very interesting is that there are uh, some historians that believe Nimrod, who's the first type of the Antichrist, the first Babylon, he's drawn like this. He has a one horn crown like that. That's very interesting. How about that? So this one horn has a lot of represent representation to Satan and the Antichrist. Not only that, what's also very interesting is that God is also likened to having horn a horn coming out of his hand as well. So what is going on right here? Satan is trying to imitate God. But every time you look up horn in the... Uh, when you look up horn, it represents power. That's what you're going to notice right here. Now, it can also represent something sexual, but I'm not going to get into that one, okay? So which is very interesting. But it, can, it represents a lot, you'll notice, about power. Power, power. You ever notice the shape of this horn, which is pretty interesting right here? Like the Tower of Babel? Or like a pyramid? Or like an obelisk? Why do cities want to grow taller and taller? Re representing power. Representing power. Authority. Pretty interesting right there. Dr. Upman's drawing, he has these horses as unicorns which is very interesting. Read the book of Psalms, it talks about unicorns. Sometimes it represents a literal unicorn, sometimes it represents a one-horned creature. That's what unicorn means. Unicorn, actually, it literally means a one-horned creature. That's why it does not necessarily have to be a white horse with one horn. It's any creature that's one horn. That's pretty interesting. So, it, so sometimes the verses will do that. Other times it will refer to, a, I believe, a white horse unicorn as well. What's interesting about mythology is that a lot of mythology, when they talk about these creatures, they got the idea from an original source. Mythology, uh, I took mythology class. Mythology is not formed until at least one generation later. And from one generation later, they get it from an original source somewhere, actually. So then uh, these uh, horse creatures with one horns, I believe that they're a real thing. But also in other portions in the Bible, it would refer to a one horned creature. You might say, why is that? Because Psalms is filled out with that. For example, it talks about Leviathan. Leviathan in the book of Psalms, it talks about literally Satan himself. Interesting, just like the one-horned creature represents the Antichrist Satan. But there are also other verses in the book of Psalms 
that refer to it undoubtedly that it cannot be Satan himself, but literally like some kind of huge water monster during David's time, during the psalmist's time. So if you don't believe me, just type down Leviathan, keep search word Leviathan in Psalms, and you'll, you'll see that. Undoubtedly, it was one contemporary in their days as a regular water creature and another reference to Satan himself. Which is not a surprise when you read the Bible. Many times in the Bible, God, when he talks about a person or a creature or a verse, he will see double applications. That's undoubtable many times. Now, why is it, uh, why is it in mythology? This is kind of interesting to me. Why is this specifically a horse now with a one horn? Why is it a horse with one horn? I wonder about that. Well, I do know this. In heaven, there are many horses. Like uh, horses came down to pick up Elijah up to heaven. The Bible talks about not to rely on the strength of horses fit for battle. Horses are always used in the context in scripture concerning battle and warfare. When you think about it that way, it makes sense why they would put one horn on a horse. Why? Because the horn represents power and conquest with warfare. You assimilate that horse which is very important for warfare, with the one horn, which is very important for warfare, you got something powerful over there. You got something powerful. But think about that. If you got, what is, what is that charge in the book of Daniel with that he goes? He goes like this, yeah. like he's charging through. Yeah. Jesus Christ, when he comes down on white horses, Revelation 19, what does he do? He charges through. He charges through, Revelation 19. Just like a unicorn. How about that? Crazy stuff, ain't it? Crazy stuff. All right, that will have. But it's interesting when you study conspiracies and all that as well. How many times they will use unicorns related to sexual symbols and pedophilia and stuff like that. Like there's even these, this stuff where they sell unicorn poop to children. Grotesque, wicked stuff. Yeah, like it's a Play-Doh or something. And they connect the unicorn with the rainbow as well, which is very interesting. Yeah. But Jesus Christ, isn't he coming down from the rainbow on white horses, charging down like that? Yeah. Woo! All right, shall we close up for the night?